Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Tuesday, 2nd January 2024 and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group is Antigua and Barbuda Customs Reach New Revenue Threshold. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. A major milestone has been reached with a collection of revenues at the Customs and Excise Division in Antigua and Barbuda. Revenues climbed to over $400 million for the first time in the country's history, eclipsing the previous peak of $390 million in 2019. ABS's Garfi Burford reports. A new revenue threshold reached by the Customs and Excise Division, closing out 2023 on $403 million. Comptroller of Customs, Roger Boudou, reacts during an interview with ABS News on Saturday. At Customs, we are really uh, quite happy um, to have reached the landmark of $400 million in revenues for the first time in the history. And um, all the boys and girls and the team, um, Antigua Customs, are so excited and very, very happy, and we are in a celebratory mode. He confirms this shows robust economic activity as recovery continues from the COVID-19 pandemic. The revenue outturn comes as the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, a UN agency, says growth in real gross domestic product in Antigua and the Bramido for 2023 is estimated at 8.5%. ECLAC also says Antigua Bramido's economy is projected to grow by 8.2% in 2024. Mr. Budu outlines the sectors which have accounted for this strong revenue growth at customs. The food sector, you know, is a constant um, you know, in the equation. So this this has done very, really very well because there is a lot of economic act- activity. There is uh, money that is being circulated. Uh, we have seen in the banking system too from the budget speech. There is a lot of money. So people have people were buying things. So that from the from that is from the consumer end, and also the major factor, other major factor that has driven this, is the the construction sector, wherever you go to Antigua, it's a common uh, sense, you know, common knowledge that the inst- uh, construction sector has taken off in a big way in 2023. And I hope this will continue in the in few years to come too. Uh, and also we have major, uh, you know, the infrastructure projects in the offing and um, if both in tourism and in a public service. And for 2024, there are projections at customs for further strong growth in revenues. For the next year, we have kept our eyes on 425 mark. So uh, about about 500, 5% plus growth again in 2024. With more than 21,000 malaria cases reported in 2023, the Ministry of Health in Guyana plans to intensify awareness and prevention efforts especially among gold miners in the upcoming year. HGP's Tiana Cole elaborates on these proactive measures in her report. Malaria, this year we recorded 21,729 cases um, and we did close to 100,000 tests. That was Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony, who was at the time speaking at the Ministry of Health's end-of-year press conference on Friday. The minister noted that several initiatives will be undertaken, with the aim of significantly reducing this figure, which has seen an uptick from 2022. We have found that there is a very close association between malaria and gold mining. And so we'll be working closely with the gold miners to make sure that we can reduce uh, the cases, especially in the camp. The minister added that in the first quarter of 2024, gold miners and persons working at various mining sites will receive training in diagnostic testing. We'll be giving them 
the treatment, teaching them how to use the protocol, and then they'll report back to us. And we think by using this strategy, we'll see a significant drop in the cases. Dr. Anthony added that the ministry has been distributing rapid diagnostic tests across the various administrative regions. We have also employed rapid testing. So you don't have to look into a microscope to diagnose somebody with, uh, with malaria. We can use rapid diagnostic tests, which is now available, and we have been distributing those as well. Tiana Cole reporting for the AHGP Night Trainers. The law enforcement platforms are all queued up, well-trained and ready to rumble all 2024. This is the reassurance that the Minister of National Security, Fitzgerald Hines, is giving the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. More from this TTT News item. Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines says he's entering 2024 with more optimism than he did this year. Because if you permit me a metaphor, I think we at National Security have spent some time in the gym. We've done some gym work. We put on some thighs, we put on some chest, we put on some muscle, we sturdied up our backbone by providing more training to our police officers and members of the law enforcement, the defense force. He is assuring the public that the law enforcement agencies are working assiduously to combat the issue of crime in the country. They go everywhere in the world and get the most up-to-date training that you can imagine and technologies. We have improved the laws, we have improved the criminal justice system in the ways we have just agreed. In terms of the forensic science center, we have improved our technique. Further underscoring their commitment to get to the root of crime, he says the attorney general is working on a control deliveries bill. Because in this business environment of gun trafficking and human trafficking and drug trafficking, sometimes the police want to get undercover and involved. So this law now will protect the police officers who have to go inside of these deals and arrangements so that when they do go inside, they cannot be prosecuted for acting illegally, but rather will have the protection of that law as they do things that are necessary if you really want to break some of these trafficking circles and cycles. Minister Hines said that there are also plans for the involuntary and ongoing integrity testing of all members of law enforcement. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. For 2024, business owners are hopeful that the ease of doing business will be less challenging. Meanwhile, rebounding from the adverse impact of COVID-19, Cinema One's revenue increased to $17.9 million compared to $10 million in 2022. CNC3's Andrea Perez-Sobers shares more in this edition of Business Watch. 2023 has been a challenging year for some businesses and two owners are hopeful that 2024 is a brighter one. Valentino Singh, retired editor and owner of Fan Club Sports Store at Trinity Mall, told CNC3 Business Watch that the store had to deal with less foot traffic as a result of a new mall opening nearby, along with the other challenges. Because we'd like to see more intervention on the part of the, the people who are in charge of the country, getting things first and a lot, a lot easier than it has been. Things like customs, getting access to your goods a lot quicker, However, Singh said despite all the challenges, the customers remained loyal along with having a strong social media presence. Also giving her view was Jalan Amab, owner of Showaholics, who said due to people having less disposable income coming out of the pandemic, sales were challenging along with the ease of doing business. In terms of banks, there is a lot of red tape um, that's going to be extremely challenging for small and medium-sized business businesses of stuff that needs to be put forward with regards to documentation, financials. You have to make sure you have a registered chartered accountant. 
IMAV wants to see more collaboration for 2024 from the government for businesses. It was a recovery year for Cinema One Limited as several blockbusters earlier this year assisted its gross revenue to increase to 77%, $17.9 million compared to last year of $10.1 million. In its financial year ended September 30th, Cinema One on the Stock Exchange notes that coupled with the lifting of the COVID-19 burden, the major movie studio releases assisted with the recovery. One local economist is saying that even if there is a slightly less murders in Trinidad and Tobago for 2023 than the record of just over 600 murders last year, that will affect both foreign and domestic investor confidence. Professor Roger Hossein spoke on the matter during the TV6 Morning Edition program. And Jewel Brown of TV6 News reports. Um, we certainly have a great program here that, that we have a high output from the university in terms of tertiary level education skills. So that we need to, to when we market the Trinidad and Tobago economy, we need to market the things we are strong at. We certainly don't want the world to be too familiar with the one with that level. Economist and senior lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Professor Roger Hossein, on the TV6 Morning Edition program as he responded to a question from the show's host, Marlon Hopkinson, on how to make Trinidad and Tobago more attractive to investors in light of competition from larger nations. Now, if you look at the Point Lisa's industrial estate, for, as an example, a lot of the firms there are huge foreign firms. Mm-hmm. Now, the formula may have to change now moving forward, given our murder level, given our um, reserves of natural gas, given the situation in the Trinidad and Tobago economy, we may need to, to modify that formula. Professor Hossein also responded to a question about projects being carried out by the state-owned Evolving Technologies and Enterprise Development Company Limited, or ETEC. I am saying that if it is we could keep pushing those ETEC parks under probably a different formulation, that, in my view, is the mechanism and the avenue. Of course, there would have to be other complementary interventions, through which economic growth could be fostered with export revenues being generated. But the professor said the structure of production must be dealt with, as he said Trinidad and Tobago is too biased towards non-tradables. He then made specific reference to last year's record high of just over 600 murders in Trinidad and Tobago. We would have to tackle the horrendous murder situation in Trinidad and Tobago, where some people are saying that if, let's say, we close this year off at 570 murders as compared to 607 murders. The Economist also made a link to that projection for 2023 and investor confidence. If you classify murders from 0 to 149 as being low, 150 to 299 as being moderate, uh, 300 to, to 449 as being high, and anything above 450 has been very high. Even though we fall from 607 to 570, we are still in the very high zone. Yes. And therefore, that makes investment inflow. Without actually having the numbers in front of me, I think that would affect investor confidence, both domestic and foreign. And so we have a lot of homework to do. The police service and other arms of the state's security services have been faced with a surge in murders within the last two weeks of 2023. According to the Finance Ministry's estimates in its review of the economy dated October 2nd, the Trinidad and Tobago economy is expected to register real GDP growth of 2.7% in 2023, following more moderate growth of 1.5% in 2022. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. Economic Affairs Minister of the Bahamas chairs the first CARICOM UK Joint Council meeting. More in this ZNS News item. The Bahamas assumed the chairmanship of Cary Forum on July 1st of this year until June 30th, 2024. In that regard, Minister of Economic Affairs, Senator the Honorable Michael Halkidis, who serves as the Cary Forum High Representative under the Cary Forum EU and Cary Forum UK Economic Partnership Agreements, chaired the first meeting of the Joint Council via video conference at the Ministry of Finance. It's the first time that ministers of Cary Forum and the United Kingdom met since the signing of the Economic Partnership agreement in 2019. The Director General of Cary Forum, Alexis Downs Amsterdam, and officers from various government ministries, in addition to the Ministry of Economic Affairs and the Ministry of Finance, 
provided technical support to Minister Halkidis at that meeting. It was there that Minister Halkidis signed on to establishing the Special Committee on Trade and Services and the Rules of Procedures for the Joint Council, the Trade and Development Committee, and for Special Committees. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially.